Hi guys, this is Angie Boo here with another video. I realize that some of you feel some kind of way about me referring to Jesus as that man. I meant no disrespect. So I thought I'd take this time to elaborate. I hope you appreciate my perspective and please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Okay, Exodus 20 and 4 says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. These are all graven images, all four of them and some. I just listed only four. Um, since John 1.14 says God's word was made flesh and dwelt among us, my goal was to point out the fact that most people solely visualize the image of Jesus Christ instead of what he truly represents, God's word. So from now on, instead of me referring to Jesus Christ in the flesh as that man, I will refer to him as the graven image. I'm hoping y'all will get it then, okay? Romans 8, uh, verses 1 and 2. Okay, I'm going to read this verse, um, how it was written, how it was translated, I should say, and then I'm going to break down what certain words means in these two verses, and then it's going to be, uh, it's actually verses 1 through 4, but I'm doing verse 1 and 2 first. It says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through God's, um, excuse me, through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has sent me, set me free from the law of sin and death. Okay, so what this means is, it says, this is how I'm going to break it down. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, you're not going to be condemned, for those who give themselves fully to God's word. Christ Jesus means God's word. Because through God's word, says Christ Jesus, through God's word, the law of the spirit, which is God, the law of God who gives life has set me free from the law of sin and death. So everybody's putting themselves under this law, the letter of the law. And I'm, I'm going to show you how the Bible's being read wrong. Okay, so verses 3 and 4. This is still Romans 8. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And he condemned um, sin in the flesh. Okay, so it's really saying for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by carnal man, by our flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of a graven image to be a sin offering. And he condemns sin in the flesh or in the graven image. He condemned that. Um, okay, verse 4. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the graven image, but according to the spirit, the comforter, the Bible, the word. Okay. Let me read that again. In, in, um, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to that graven image, these graven images, that's what we're living according to, Jesus. Yahweh Shai, we're living according to that. But according to the Spirit, which is the comforter, the Word, God's Word, we should be living, towards, living in God's Word and not in these graven images. And that's what people do. They just constantly, I, I hear people constantly saying, thank you, Jesus. I have a, a good friend um, who's just awakening to the truth. And, and um, when she says that, thank you, Jesus, I let her know, why are you thanking God's word? How come you don't thank him? And then she gets it. She gets what I'm saying. We have come to worship in these graven images. But when we were Christian, we worshiped this white guy. But then when we wake into the truth, we start worshiping him as black. 
Same guy, but we just make sure he, he, we change him to black. You're still worshiping a graven image. You're not worshiping God himself. God sent his son. His son is his word. And it says that. John 1.14 says he's the word, that God's word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. And that's what we, start, we um, tend to gravitate towards. But then we start calling on him. We call on Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anything happens. Thank you, Jesus. You forget all the, about God. We made him a graven image. We've, that, that's um, making God's, God in vain. We made him in vain. He's empty. Okay, let me move on. Okay. Um, in other words, most people have replaced God with these graven images. That's what I mean when I say Jesus is not God, but God's word mentioned in John 1.14. I've suggested that all of these images be referred to as God's word. That's the bread, the water, the meat. They're all referred to as God's word. But whenever I suggest that we should be following what John 1.14 says, and also refer to um, Christ Jesus as God's word, everyone starts to feel some kind of way. Due to a lack of understanding, you want to continue to worship these graven images instead of God himself. Okay, so when I talked about the um, feeding with Jesus um, fed the 5,000, First, it was the 5,000 in Matthew, um, five loaves of bread and a couple of fish. And then I think Mark or Luke, I can't remember which one it was, he fed 4,000, seven loaves of bread and a couple of fish. I believe that that 5,000 loaves, that five loaves is Torah, the first five books of the Bible. He was feeding the literal word. But then when he fed the 4,000, he was feeding the spiritual word, the spirit. And I think those fish... They might be, um, I said the northern and southern kingdom, I don't think so. I think it might be the first, I mean, the um, Old and New Testament, but I'm still guessing, okay? But, yes, this has meaning. He fed five loaves of bread, and he fed seven loaves of bread. These things have meaning. The, in the Old Testament, is literal, and the New Testament is spiritual. Okay, now I want to discuss how Jesus, God's word, fulfills the law. Okay, now this is going to get a lot of people because that we want to go back to those old laws and wrapping our heads and that that's not even a law. But we want to wear fringes and do all these things. You want to do all these works. And it says Matthew uh, 5, 17 through 18. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Um, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Has it been fulfilled? And I'm going to show you where it has been fulfilled. I've learned to acknowledge Jesus as God's word instead of thinking of him as a graven image. For instance, instead of me thinking of the graven image as being hung on a tree, I visualize God's word hung on a tree. I read this to you in the last one, but the last time I said that man, and I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to call him a graven image, what, exactly what he is. Okay, Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Um, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy na- thy, um, the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commands hang all the law and the prophets. Those hung, they, they're hanging on that tree, okay? Galatians 5.14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If you love, love is the key word. If we love everyone as we love God and ourselves, we automatically follow the letter of the law, which is the commandments, okay? Not those 613 laws, but everybody wants to go way back to those 613 laws that are impossible to keep, okay? Um, These first four, if you love 
God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, you're going to do these first four. Now, that fourth one, the Sabbath, we need to discuss that because that's a spiritual meaning that people just don't understand. Now, if you love all these last um, five, uh, if you do all these last five commandments, you, it's just love. If you love your father and your mother, you, you, you're going to be doing that commandment. If you love yourself as your, um, your parents as you love God and yourself, you're going to automatically do that commandment. Thou shalt not kill. Now, that doesn't mean if you kill somebody by accident or if you kill somebody in self-defense. That means if you just downright literally kill somebody for no reason. Um, that's what that means. Uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. Adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear witness against thy neighbor, and thou shalt not covet. If you love everyone else as you love yourself and as you love God, you're going to automatically do these commandments. So that's why they're fulfilled with love. Love fulfills the commandments. Okay? The word fulfilled those commandments. Okay? Israelites who awaken to the truth, who of who we really are, suddenly start to visualize God as some abusive and controlling man. But I beg to differ. Once everyone learns the proper way to interpret scripture, we will understand what God is trying to tell us. People want me to suggest that God said, if you only eat clean foods, you will be saved. If you dunk your head under some water, you will be saved. If women and girls wrap their heads with silly scarves, you will be saved. If men and boys wear fringes, you will be saved. If you don't mix seed, plant, and clothing, you will be saved. If you keep the Sabbath on a particular day, you will be saved. If you miraculously keep all 613 laws, you will be saved, etc., etc., etc. God is not shallow abusive, nor controlling. He gives us free will. None of these things will save us. Our Savior is God himself. We must get to him through Jesus Christ, not the graven image, but his holy word. And that's what I'm trying to get people to understand. We, as soon as we say Jesus Christ, you think of that graven image. You're not thinking that he's God's word. Get into that Bible, his word, the comforter. I'm going to end this short video right here by saying that I hope I did not offend anyone in this video. I'm only suggesting that you start to think logically and learn the proper way to interpret God's holy word. And with that, I'll say, until next time, to Yah be the glory, Shalom from Angie Boo.